What's up guys, hope you're having an amazing day. This is how to get a blue belt in Jiu Jitsu fast. My coach sent me an email and he said, I'm gonna promote you and this will be the fastest I've promoted anyone in the school to blue without having prior wrestling experience. Now, here's a few of the tips and just some ideas that I have on how to progress quickly as a brand new white belt. It took me a little bit over a year I know people have done it quicker than I have, but this is this is something that I really put a lot of time and energy into, and I think I have some insight to share with you guys. So if you're just getting started, here it is. The first thing is that you want to be consistent, all right? Very simple. In the beginning, I was training five to six days a week, and that was like week after week after week. There wasn't long periods where I was not training. I was showing up five days a week, sometimes six. I was trying to do Saturday and Sunday morning class. Some days I would do two a days, but when I started this, everything else kind of took a back seat. I was focused and I was dedicated. When I was younger, I did karate. I never made it past white belt. So when I got into jujitsu, I was 29. I said, you know what? I gotta get a blue belt. I'm just gonna dedicate my time and energy. I'm gonna allocate all these you know, resources I'm going to take even a step back from the gym and bodybuilding, and I'm going to focus on jujitsu, learning the game, and mastering these techniques. So, you know, five, six days a week, and my coaches saw this. They saw that I wasn't, you know, training for five days and then taking a week off and then training three days and then training seven days and just all over the place. I was training consistently. They would see me. They knew me at the night class. Within three months, everyone there at the academy knew, knows my name and uh, you know they see that I'm being consistent. The next thing is um, simply having deliberate practice. Deliberate practice is when you go into the dojo, you make an effort to work on something that you are weak at. For me, takedowns have always been my weakest thing. So in the beginning, when I would go against a wrestler, I didn't know how to sprawl. I didn't know how to um, sprawl out, shoot the legs back, change the hip angle. I didn't know how to even, you know, say, roll through with a knee bar. Right. And so I started to learn this, but then it came to, okay, I can't just use these little tricks and things to try to counter wrestle. I need to actually learn how to get better with stand up. So I started watching some judo. I started watching some wrestling. How do I take a appropriate shot? How do I get better at this thing that I'm pretty bad at? So every time I would go into the gym, I'd have to put down the ego because I know, well, maybe I'm not going to get a sub this round, or maybe I'm going to end up in a poor position. I'm going to get in someone's side control or I'm going to be mounted. I'm not going to be in an advantageous position for me to win. So that's okay because you don't need to go into every single training session trying to beat everyone. That's not the purpose of training. The purpose of training is to get better at your weaknesses that you can become great one day at these things. And so now I'm not great at wrestling, but I can actually hold myself against another wrestler. I, I understand collar ties. I understand hand fighting. I understand that I can hang in the pocket a bit better. I understand level changes. I understand trying to create an angle better than I ever have before. So I'm more confident on my feet. And um, I think one thing that you should do is go in with the mindset of deliberate practice. Mika Gaval, one of the, you know, one of these prodigies in jujitsu world says that every single month in their academy, they focus on one thing. So one month it's like triangles. And they just master triangles. They, every time they go in, they're focused on, okay, we're going to drill. We're going to learn the triangle. We're going to learn how to set it up. When they spar, they're trying to throw a triangle. The next month, they'll move on to maybe escaping from the mount. And so they'll actually let people get them in top mount and they'll try to escape. That way they become very, very efficient at, and they master a few moves. Just like Bruce Lee said it, you know, he fears the man that has mastered, that has kicked one, used one kick 10,000 times. So I think it's, it's huge to actually go in with the mindset that you're going to get better at a certain thing. That way, when you move away from that, it's in your toolkit. You have that in your arsenal. And jujitsu isn't this crazy, crazy complicated thing. It can go very deep. There can be a lot of very intricate things that are going on. But to be really good, you just need to master like a handful of things. 
And if you master 12 different moves, I mean, I can just think of, if you mastered takedowns, if you mastered how to pin someone and apply pressure from side control or make your mount game very strong, if you mastered a few submissions, arm lock, triangle, bow and arrow choke, head and arm choke, if you master taking the back, you don't need all this fancy Baron Bolo stuff when you're a, as a white belt. You need to master very basic things. How to pin someone, how to control a position before you go to sub them. If you can learn these basic things and, and really have this, these fundamentals to your game, how to get out of bad positions. How do you escape when someone has you inside control? How do you get out of the mount? How do you get out of when someone takes your back? How do you get out of bad positions? How do you, can you hold good positions? If you can learn these as a white belt, if you can really focus in on this stuff, let the ego go in, stop trying to submit everyone every single round, focus on your weaknesses and be consistent, your coaches are going to see this. They're going to say, wow, this guy's game is developing fast. And you'll actually know a lot of people will start talking about you. People in the gym will start saying and talking about your game and people will take note. You'll often have purple belts start to compliment you. You often have the blue belts start to get a little bit intimidated to roll with you, right? We all we all know that a uh, white belt that is is kind of big and and maybe strong has some wrestling background, and we're kind of intimidated. Maybe we dodge them at class, right? But you'll hear people talking about you, man. You'll hear people like complimenting you, saying and telling you you're getting better. You're you're pressure is on point man they're not just gonna say oh you're strong right that the backhanded compliment oh you're really strong man yeah i know i'm strong okay i've been working out for years i know that's a backhanded compliment people are gonna not say this much oh you know how to apply pressure you know how to hold this position really well okay so the next thing train gi and train no gi when i first started i was just doing gi i was scared of no gi why i was scared that I, the grips that i needed the grips no gi is amazing. I think training gi actually made my no gi game better. Um, it, it's a lot different though, and they both will will complement each other. So train both, especially like if you're at a gym where they train both, you have to do both. The coaches are not going to take you seriously and promote you if you're not training both gi and no gi. Okay, you need to do both. No gi is a lot of fun too. I was intimidated at first, but I'm so glad I started doing it. I actually now kind of prefer no gi. I think in competitions that no gi is a breath of fresh air. The gripping of the gi is so exhausting that by the time the no gi rounds come in, I'm like, oh, thank God, you know, I can just, uh, you know, I, I can just wiggle my way out of these bad positions. You got sweat dripping all over you, just slipping and sliding all over the mat, getting out of bad spots. It, it's just, it's a ton of fun. It's great. And it adds a new element to jujitsu. I think you should work on both. The coaches really want to see that. The next thing is you need to be competitive. My first competition was, I was, I think it was two, three months in when I first started competing. I've done five competitions as a white belt. Um, I've done four as a white belt, one as a blue belt. And, you know, I was there, I was doing good, and my coaches love to see that. A lot of people, they were showing up, they're not competing. Listen, competing is not a big deal. Competing is just like any other sport. If you, you know, I live in Cleveland, the Cavaliers, they, they practice basketball to play games on the weekend when their season rolls around. You're practicing jujitsu during the week. When a competition comes to your area, you compete. It's just the way it is. It's not this big deal. You lose some, you win some. No one gives a shit. Especially a white belt, no one cares about you. You're not setting any records. You're not an ADCC. You're not some like superstar. No one cares. You need to compete. Competing will show you that there is a different level of physical exertion to this game. When you're sparring at the gym, you think you're going 100%. You're not. I'm telling you, you may be going 70. Competition, there's an extra 30% there that you have not tapped into. And it's adrenaline, it is the people that are watching you, you know, you got your auntie and your damn stepdad watching you and you know, your girlfriend, and that makes you rev it up a little bit, okay? There's a level of exhaustion that you will come and, and, and fight against that mindset to push through that you just don't have when you're sparring in a gym. So you have to get in there. It will also teach you so much You'll be able to review some tapes. You know, you have your girlfriend record you. You'll be able to review where you went wrong. What did you do? 
you didn't something stupid that you were never aware of. There was openings that you didn't take advantage of. You didn't secure a position before you moved on. You were going too fast. You need to slow down. This is so helpful. It will make you an elite player within your own gym. And it, it will just show you a new level of the game very quickly and broadly. So your coaches love to see that. My coaches love to see me competing. Every time I, every time a tournament would come up, I'm in. I didn't miss one. I'm in. I'm in. Fuji, Grappling Industries. I'm in. I'm in. Let's go. Right? So they love to see that. And I noticed that uh, people that don't compete, they don't get promoted. Like, they, they don't get promoted quick. So the next thing is just don't show up and be lazy. Like, here's what I mean. You know when they're going over techniques and they're like, all right, one, two, three, break. And people get up slowly like they're holding their backs. Like, you know, like, come on. Like, show some motivation. Show some willingness Yes, I'm going to take advantage of this. I know a lot of people, I, I find it myself because it rubs off on you, man. You know, uh, it's too easy to be lazy. Oh, I can't wait to get drilling over with just so we can spar. What for? Drilling makes you a killer, right? Killers are drillers, they say. And it's true. I always kind of hated the drilling aspect, but now I've been really trying to go in there and, and have some focus with drilling. Like if it's time to drill, it's time to drill. I'm going to take advantage of these drilling. We were working on pressure from side control the other day, and I'm really just, every time it's my turn, you know, my partner, I'm like, all right, okay, this is the grip. I'm trying to, I'm giving him the shoulder pressure here. I'm pushing the legs, turning the hips. And, uh, you know, I'm really just trying to ingrain that in my mind. My coaches see this. When you're the first one, three, two, one, break, and you boom, you're up. Like your coaches see your willingness to train. I, I find this is such a big thing. that You see a lot of the, the, the people that show up to jiu-jitsu just kind of, like, why are they even there? You want to be show this willingness to train and to get better, that you have this, like, passion for the sport. Um, and the last thing is, listen, stay in shape. While I was training five days, I was still in the gym. I was still getting my cardio on point. I was still working out and staying strong. Too many of these jiu-jitsu guys, they think that they can go to jiu-jitsu and be this skinny, lanky, little weasel. Like, good luck, man. Good luck. Any guy that is a blue belt, or listen, not even belt-wise, but any guy that has been training for the same amount of time as you, and he has, and he's stronger than you, the, your techniques are equal, he's going to dominate you. Like, you need strength. Anyone that says strength is irrelevant to jiu-jitsu is, is probably weak or, or not that smart, because it is. Look at the top guys. They're all strong. Everyone's on a training program. Everyone's lifting weights. You have to be doing this, man. Jiu-Jitsu is just the, the physical body. Like, yeah, you use your mind, but you need to be like physically like an athlete, like strong and capable. You need to lift. You need to be able to stack pass. You need to be able to freaking hold someone there, like hold them in place. You need to be strong. Okay, so so don't think like, oh, I'm just going to use technique. Like technique combined with strength is going to make you a great competitor. And you're going to be very good at this. And your coaches are going to see that like this guy's an athlete. This guy is getting stronger. I didn't get any stripes um, for like the first nine months, and then I got three. And then I trained, you know, for another five, I think four or five months. And then boom, he just, he's like, yeah, it's, it's in undeniable. Just, it's time for your blue belt. So there it is, man. Um, you know, take your time, have fun, enjoy what you're doing. But those are, those are my tips, man. So just to reiterate is compete often. Compete often, don't be scared. No one gives a shit about you. Um, show consistency. It will show that you have a willingness. Your coaches will see that. Drill with purpose. Okay. Don't be lazy to just kind of moping around. Don't sit out in sparring. Like I see too many people, they roll two rounds and they sit out. There's like five rounds left. Do every single sparring, like do every five minutes at the end, right? They're, they're sparring for 30 minutes. You should be rolling. Six times then. It's simple as that. Don't be sitting on the bleachers. Oh, I'm tired. That's how your cardio gets better. Roll with brand new white belts. Roll with people that are smaller than you. Roll with all shapes and sizes, but don't sit out. You're not going to get better that way. So the next one is uh, train gi and no gi. You got to do this, okay? And um, deliberate practice. Go in there and work on some stuff that you may be weak at and get better. Okay, get better. Focus every time. Now I have this thing like every time I go into the gym, I'm trying to get at least 
one like double leg takedown and um, one like foot sweep. Like every single time that's I'm going in there, I'm trying to do that just from sparring, right? So because I want to get better on my feet, I need to get better if I'm going to be better at jujitsu. So that's it, guys. Hope this has helped. Let me know what is, you know, if you are a blue belt or higher, let me know what, you know, your tips are for me because I'm still learning. I don't have all the answers. So I'd like to learn from you. Hope you have a blessed day. I'll talk to you soon. Peace.